Don't do it as I do it because this is just for tutorial purpose only. Normally you have to take um, a tool to hold this in place, otherwise you're going to break the post. That's what I mean. <laughs> How many bloody nights did this take to put together? Uh, here we are on a school night. Uh, yeah, being a Luddite, it's uh, not very useful. G'day everybody and welcome back. So you've gone and ordered a clutch modification from Bigelar Performance. It would appear that poor old Twan has been inundated. So he's contacted me and he's, he's asked me to put together this video. Um, for anybody who is who primarily has ordered uh, a clutch modification from Bigelar Performance, and I guess for anybody else that might be interested, this video is also useful if you have a dry clutch Ducati and you're just doing regular maintenance on the bike and you want to inspect your clutch because um, there's a few traps for young players that we need to to discuss here. One question that keeps coming up, what bikes will this modification work on? It will work on all dry clutch Ducatis, with the exception of a couple of the really early ones that had the slave cylinder on the clutch cover side. But any that have got the push rod going through the crankcase, it will work. So, you know, all of the six speeds and some of the early ones. Why the modification? Why, why should we do it? I like the Ducati clackety clack noise. The entire clutch pack is housed on the centre hub and there is a void between the last steel disc and the back of the, um, or the face of the inside of the basket. So it's driven only by the length of that pack and directly in the grooves of the basket. The engine is a V-twin, L-twin, an L twin, 90 degree L twin, it fires the first cylinder and then very quickly fires the second cylinder. And then you have a lag before the first cylinder fires again, which means that low RPMs, like below 3000 RPMs, um, there is forward momentum with the clutch basket and then there's backward momentum with the clutch basket as, as the back wheel starts to overtake the engine. So you have this constant bang, 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 which is why they're very jerky and uh, unforgiving at low RPMs. Uh, in effect, what happens is you constantly have this hammering back and forward, back and forward, back and forward, back and forward in the basket, and it frets out the basket, and it, rec it uh, damages the, the, the driving dogs on the friction plates. And it also knocks around the centre hub and the steel discs. And it also contributes to other wear on fairly significant and major components within the engine. There's a cush drive, a steel drum cush drive with rubber inserts that the aluminium um, clutch hub sits on. And um, that can move around and uh, also cause issues. So what, uh, what this modification does is it essentially um, creates a, uh, a friction surface of low resistance. So it's, it's essentially just keeps the pack um, from juttering forward and back by taking up the space between the face, inside face of the clutch basket and the first disc. There are other modifications out there that people have, you know, figured out over the years how to stop their, their clutches from rattling. However, they don't address the issues that we, uh, that Big R Performance have addressed with this modification because the void between the, the, shim, uh, the clutch pack and the basket still exists, so you still have this, um, this horrible mechanical assembly. So all of that out of the way, um, 
I tried to do a FaceTime video with Tuan and um, we spent a, quite a bit of time talking and, and going through. He set up everything in the workshop so that uh, we could talk through it and I recorded it on my smartphone but the phone is smarter than me because the sound didn't work and I initially assumed it was because I had the pods in on the iPhone. So the next night, or day for Tuan, we did it again and the result was the same. So um, what Tuan's done now is he has put together a video with a, a worst case scenario engine. So he's got one with all of the issues. Well, he's assembled parts with all of the issues so that he can go through and address it, address each issue um, one at a time. And so these are things that you need to be looking out for if you are even just doing a routine maintenance inspection on your, on your clutch or whether, or you, whether you're fitting one of the, the bigger lower performance modifications. One of, the, um, one of the key things that Tuan wanted to get across was, uh, a couple actually, if you've ordered one, he's, he's about two weeks away from being able to fulfil those orders, purely because they make everything in-house with the exception of the steel disc. He, he gets them done by a CNC machine shop up the road because they're more accurate and it's repeatable and it's quick. So um, there's a bit of a, a lag time waiting for those. The other thing that he wanted to me to point out to anyone and everyone who's ordered one is that you need to specify and be clear as to whether or not you have a steel basket or an aluminium basket. If you have a steel basket, um, the disc gets tapped in as as shown when I installed the one on my bike. If you have an aluminium basket, they will supply a disc that is slightly smaller in diameter so that it um, fits nicely down into the basket, but there's no friction, there's no interference fit there. So you need to actually put that disc in with an adhesive, some form of silicon adhesive. And it can't be like a three bond or something like that that you would use on your case. It needs to be an adhesive like a Sikaflex or uh, probably even just plain silicon. It just needs to be able to hold it there. There's no drive on that disc, so you don't have to worry about it worrying about, you don't need to worry about it uh, spinning in the basket. Its only job is just to maintain a bit of pressure on the clutch pack and keep it all from moving about. So in rather than listening to, listening to me waffle, what I'll do is, uh, I'll just use Twan's video. I'll insert it here um, and let you watch what you could potentially be up against. So if you've cast your mind back, if you or if this is the first time you've ever visited here to this, this channel, I had movement on the input shaft of the gearbox on my, my Ducati and I had some wear. Um, one, of the, one of the components that was worn was the centre hub of the clutch. Um, I don't think I covered that actually, but where the flower-shaped sh shim washer fits onto the hub, it had fretted into the, into the aluminium, or the zinc aluminium, pop metal, whatever the hell it is, cast um, hub, and I ended up fitting a second washer to it to take up um, the wear. So these are so, and, and that movement in the input shaft required me to split my cases and play, replace a heap of bearings. So it's important that you do inspect it, and it's important that you don't just put your head in the sand; that you address the issues that you find. So I'll flick over now to Twan and let him carry on uh, and show you uh, some of the issues that you could potentially face. First check if there's not a lot of play in the house because that would mean the bearing is gone like with this one then just remove it 
in this case now the spring plate the flower plate looks like it's tight that's why you take a soft hammer and gently tap the post and then you can see the plate is coming loose this also means that the clutch assembly because basically it's this is the outer, uh, outer part the drum and in the back there's a steel part um, which functions as a transmission uh, absorber um, what happens is if this wears out the aluminium part can come to the front and then the clutch starts moving like this wobbly uh, that's also the reason why uh, the bearing housing inside the casings uh, gets damaged. You take out all the plates. These plates are completely worn. You can see the ramps, the, the parts are very thin. What you also can do is just untighten the nut. Don't do it as I do it because this is just for tutorial purpose only. Normally you have to take um, a tool to hold this in place, otherwise you're going to break the post. That's what I mean. <laughs> so basically you can make yourself one from steel plates like this. Or you have an official one that keeps the drum and uh, the housing together. But that means you have to take out some plates before you can use it. take this out completely and then you can also see because the original way it's mounted it has two steel plates to start with so the entire clutch package is supported only by uh, the drum and the basket is the driven part I will show you in a minute this basket is beyond repair I don't know if you can see it clearly this is unusable, it looks like a hacksaw instead of a basket. There's the bush. If you have to replace all the parts, and if you buy an aluminium basket, the ring that you get is a little bit smaller than this one. Um, you put it in, you put some adhesive on the side that has the uh, rounded edge, put it in, Put something heavy on it, so it will uh, pressure uh, the ring back in the end, and you make sure that it's uh, uh, dr almost dry before you mount everything and use the clutch. In this case, I took a worst case scenario possibility. With this particular bike, it's sadly the bearing moves up and down in the casing. I'll try to get it up and close. If you look closely, you see the bearing moving in the casing. So, in this case, you have a serious problem because that would mean you have to replace the entire casings. Okay, back to the assembly. Just gonna do it quickly. 
for the tutorial purpose only. In this case I'm going to use a steel house because it already has the ring inside. So it's a bit easier for me to demonstrate. Push back in. In this case, I took a, bus, uh, a, a drum that is, it is damaged here, but it's just, I want to show you how you can fix this problem um, from the wearing out in the aluminium easily. You just, you put the flower shape shim on there, one, and another one. In this case, it will fill up the part that has been worn out. And when you tighten it up, it will lock the transmission part from the drum and the drum itself back to the position it should be. And it cannot wobble around anymore. As the ring in the back is mounted, we put the, um, the, the convex loaded uh, uh, ring in there that we supply with the clutch modification. This is the part that keeps the back of the basket connected to all the plates on the, on the hub. Then, as I didn't yet produce the uh, uh, clutch plates, friction with the backside steel, I'm going to use this one as an example. You get a plate like this, that is steel on the back, friction on one side, the steel part goes to the convex part. Then you're going to rebuild the clutch packet with steel, friction, steel, friction. The only thing you have to take care of is the last two plates that are on the original basket uh, drum. Uh, one of them is convex and you can find that with either a mark on the back or it has a stamp or a center point around that area there and you can supply you with a picture that plate has to go out because the, the convex ring in the back that we supply basically uh, takes uh, the job from that one if you build it up like this. Roughly you need to measure from here to the last steel plate around 3 to 3.5 millimeters. So from here to there has to be 3 to 3.5 millimeters. In that case the clutch still releases properly when finding neutral. In my case it should be a little bit thicker as I see because the pressure plate play that you have from there to there to the back I have to measure it see if I can get it on camera is around 7.7 .7. so if you are 3, 3.5 you're halfway that means the pressure plate can still move out and it doesn't drag the rest of the clutch package to f when you want to try finding neutral. Also, if you, one way or the other, still have a convex plate in there, besides my modification convex plate, it's gonna do the same thing. It will drag and you can find neutral very hard. And here you can see, even with the modification that we put in with completely worn out plates and all the Springs are back in. It hardly it moves, but it's only because there's a friction from the uh, convex ring in the back. So basically, 
where you're driving it's either it's one way loaded or it's if you brake on the engine it's loaded the other side but it cannot do this anymore in low RPM or in idle. That's basically the basics for mounting the clutch modification. All right, well, thank you, Twan, and thank you guys for, for tuning in. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment, and I will catch you next time on Andy's Motorcycle Obsessions. Bye for now.